I was just in the post office sending out some calendars. Both are available at the point of making this video anyway. Links in the description. If you want to grab one to support the channel, please do. Anyway, onwards. In this video, I want to talk about owning multiple motorcycles, the pros and cons, etc. As you know, uh, you may not know if you're new to my channel, and if you are, subscribe. You might like some of the stuff around here. And I'm on my way to 100k, so I appreciate the help on that. Uh, I own a DRZ 400 SM. It's actually a 440, uh, but I'll get into that in a bit. And I own a 2010 Yamaha XJ6 Diversion. But I often have a third bike on hand as well because I get lent bikes for review. So I've, I've nearly always got three bikes to choose from when I go for a ride. But we'll get on to that. Let's start with costs. How expensive is it to own two bikes? Well, bike purchasing cost, well that's completely dependent on the, how much you spend. Uh, which comes down normally to the reasons as to why you're getting two bikes. Um, I think for, for many people, they might have a, a super high-end sporty bike that's like really fast and great fun, but not the greatest bike to ride long distance. And then they might have something more mundane as a bike to just get them around. And there are many benefits to that, and this is part of the benefits of having two bikes, which is that you don't use your special bike, as it were, all the time you know you can put miles on the workhorse and keep your special bike in better condition less miles on it you know, you'd have to take it out in horrible weather and stuff like that if you don't want to you know i can imagine someone who might have something like a, a hp4 or something that's quite expensive they're going to have a secondary bike to use when they're not riding that because you don't necessarily want to take that down the shops so my two bikes combined value is probably around five thousand pounds something like that uh, which is obviously quite a lot less than some people would spend on a single bike. So that cost is completely dependent on what you want. And it will have a knock-on effect, of course, to your insurance as well. And that's what I'll go on to next. It doesn't cost double to insure two bikes. It's like as much as an all bike plus a little bit more. I can't really give a percentage because my insurance was coming down at the same time because I'd had my full license longer uh, and I had more no claims as the same time that I got two bikes, so it was very difficult to sort of say how much extra it was, but it, it wasn't drastically more expensive. Obviously you have to tax both bikes, but two bikes, depending on the CC, might only cost you as much as a single year on a car, so that again isn't a huge cost. So to own two bikes is not necessarily an extravagant thing that people see as like, oh, you know, like two Jags. No, it's two bikes, it's still only four wheels fuel costs are pretty much unaffected because obviously you only ride one bike at a time um, and a lot of things are like that because you only use one bike at a time in fact you'll probably find yourself using the workhorse far more than your special bike because that's kind of the reason why you bought it that's why I bought my XJ6 because my DRZ has had nearly as much money put into it in fixing things because I used it so much as it did to buy uh, and it was at that point when I had, had the opportunity to get a secondary bike it was like that is going to be a good decision long term because I'm not going to keep destroying the DRZ taking it on the motorway and stuff like that so I actually think that I probably may have saved money in getting two bikes because I'm not putting all the work onto one bike it's not ideal so as I say with a lot of these things 100% more bike doesn't mean 100% more cost it may mean 25% more cost 50% more cost uh, but it's not that bad you know, I'm definitely not rolling in it, but I can afford to keep these bikes on the road at the moment. With the support of you guys, obviously. Now, I have a slightly unique position with this, is that is I ride bikes a lot because it's part of my job. And having two bikes to my channel means that I can do multiple different things. Uh, and that's kind of the thing that leads me on to the, the reason why you might want two bikes. I have genuinely considered selling both of my bikes and buying one bike that could do the job, you know, just as well as both. And the fact is, there isn't a bike that can do it. As I say, my XJ6, it's an inline four, it's quite, f it is quite fast, it's not the fastest bike out there, but it's, it's pretty quick and it can cruise happily at, you know, 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, I mean, Christ, it can, can happily cruise at 100. Revs are a little bit high at that point, but you shouldn't be doing that anyway, obviously. obviously. And I'm talking like Mexico, and places like that where you'd be doing that. But um, the DLZ, it, it, its performance is, very very good as in fast acceleration powerful beefy bike apart from it tops out around 100 and that's that's really topping out by the way it gives up around 85 and on the motorway it's only really happy doing 65 you're not going to want to hold it at 70 
Uh, I mean, yeah, you can adjust the gearing to improve that, but then you're kind of removing some of the whole point of the DRZ being a supermoto is that it's a powerful, torquey engine. The DRZ is pretty light in comparison to a sports bike, uh, and obviously it's designed with long travel suspension to be a, an intermediate off-road bike, uh, so I can go green, green laning on it. Um, if I was to find a bike that could do the green laning, but also be capable of being on the road, you know, comfortably on the motorway, I think I might struggle a little bit because it's going to end up being quite a bit heavier, so not ideal for the off-road stuff. And it's a totally different experience, you know, between my XJ6 and this. This is a proper, proper hooligany little toy that you just blast around on. Well, you can ride it normally, and you know I do, but if, if you get in the country roads and it's a good day and it's a good time and a place, you can blast around on this thing, and you're not going excessively fast, and it's it, it can be sort of edge of the seat at moments. It's not a sophisticated bike, but it is damn fun. A lot of this comes down to personal preference. As I say, truly, at my heart of hearts, the bikes I love the most are supermotos. They are overall amazingly fun bikes. And I used to think they were quite practical, and they are if your situation is you live in a, in a city or in a rural area and you don't need to go long distance on the motorway. That is where they just fall down flat on their face hard. Of course, there are options like the 690 and the 701, which are far more capable of uh, holding motorway speeds, and that might be the answer for you. Um, is that the answer for me? Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of the feel of the, uh, the KTM 690, or the 701 for that matter. There's just something about it I don't really like. I mean, it might be something I'd get more used to if I rode one more. I have only ridden both these bikes for a handful of miles each. But equally, I love riding the XJ6, having that inline four engine, which is different. It, it, it needs to scream. It needs to, you know, you need to use the revs to get it to have its power. The, the, the handling is much more like a sports bike than this is and it's not it's not a sports bike but it's far more like it and it's really helped me when it's come to reviewing uh, those sorts of bikes because you do ride an inline four very differently to the way that you ride a single cylinder and you also ride a supermoto style bike very differently to the way you ride a sports bike it's a, it's, it's a very different style um and to get good at both you kind of need to do both Switching backwards and forwards uh, is something that can be a bit confusing at first, especially if you're going from something from like one real, really different bike to another really different bike, like Supermoto to the sports bike. But it is something that with time you get used to. Uh, you just have to keep going backwards and forwards from bike to bike, and eventually your brain creates this reset point where you get on and it's just, oh, okay, I'm riding this bike. Um, it doesn't feel like any different. Like before, if I was on my XJ6 a lot and then I got onto this, I was like, I felt like I was up in the air, I felt like I was going to fall over, um, and I don't get that anymore. And I think that is very relevant, because if you are getting two bikes, as I've said, you might as well make them completely different from each other, because then they're going to have different purposes, different reasons for you to own them. I mean, there are quite a lot of people out there who have big, powerful sports bikes and also have a little 125 just to have fun on, pretty much, and use as the, the sort of the daily beater, as it were. There is something with owning two bikes, though, that kind of doubles, or it might even more than double, because it's maintenance and corrosion protection and stuff like that. Because, obviously, that sort of stuff is time representative. So if I go and ride this bike for a while, uh, and then I leave it for a few weeks, and it's got all the, the, you know, the crud and stuff all over from riding it, it's going to be affected by that the whole time it's not being used. So keeping them clean, keeping them protected, is a very good thing to do. And bikes that aren't used degrade faster than bikes that are used in certain aspects, in my opinion. There's just something about, you know, using a bike. Like, if you have a bit of exposed frame on the side of your bike, if you ride it every day, you will never see a bit of rust on that, because your foot's constantly rubbing on it. It's rubbing any chances of any rust on there. You then leave that for a week in the garage, you'll come back and there's rust on it. So what I'm saying here is having two bikes is not necessarily extravagant. Uh, it can make a lot of sense to do, depending on your situation, your wants and needs. But how about more than two bikes? How about three bikes? I am of the opinion that three is a good number. It's fun to have three to choose from, but you will not use one of them a lot because of it. You know, where I've got the option of picking from three bikes when I've got a review bike in, uh, okay, admittedly, when I'm in my local area, I do like taking the review bikes because they're 125s, so they're cheap on fuel, they're much more fun on 30, 40 mile an hour roads. 
but when I do have one of those at my disposal, I tend, as I say, use two of them more than one of them, and one of them doesn't get touched for a while because of it. I mean, it also, it does actually make this, is, this is a real thing. It depends what sort of storage you have for them. Now, I keep my bikes in the garage, and if I had two bikes, I can get them side by side, so I can selectively pick which one that I want. If I have three bikes in there, I have to put one against the wall, one against that, and then one further up. So then I can only really get two of them out at any time, not any three. So as I say, that's the, the one that gets pinned in the corner tends to be the one that gets left. Now you can just have a rearrange every now and then, and it kind of forces yourself to use different bikes because going and getting that bike against the wall out is a pain in the butt. But if you had a, a bigger size garage, then you could, you know, well, it depends. Whatever you've got, you could have as many bikes as you want to be able to selectively grab them without having to move another one. It would now appear I have ridden into a cloud, sorry. Try cleaning your eye up, it's probably not going to do too well. I think I'll do a Huey and go back down the hill. Actually, no, I'll, I'll turn off up here and do a loop back to where I need to go. I think another thing that makes a difference is where you live in the world. Because if you live in, say, California, where there's kind of the same all year round, I believe, you can ride all year, no, there isn't really a, an off-season out there, I don't think, I can't imagine there is, you can ride all year round, so you can, you know, use both bikes or however many bikes you've got quite a bit. However, in England, for a lot, a lot of people, you know this if you ride all year, you don't see another bike on the road this time of year round, because people put their bikes away for six months, so having two bikes when you're only riding for six months or, or seven months of the year, means that you, you don't have as much time to use both of them. And if you lived in a place like Canada, you physically can't ride for many months of the year because of the snow. You'd think it was like that here with the number of people who don't ride in the UK just because it's a little bit cold and a little bit damp. They're missing out on so much. <laughs> I do realise the irony of you going, oh yeah, I'm missing out on so much. Look at you there, probably freezing cold, getting soaking wet on a slippery, slimy road that you can't go very fast on with the leaves of death scattered all over it. Yeah, I'm really missing out on her body. Shut up. <laughs> As I said before, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. You've got to enjoy the bad times on a bike. So when they have the good times, it's that much better. Maybe I'll get to enjoy my bike way more than you ever because you didn't ever have to suffer to be on it too. <laughs> and then you're just like, no. No. How can I round this one up? Um, having two bikes, has pros and cons. Personally for me, because of my needs, because of what I do, having two bikes is its not a must, but it's very useful. It means I can make multiple types of content, I have multiple types of bikes to test things against. It's, it's really good for me. Um, for your everyday rider, yeah, you, you probably survive quite happily with one bike, and at times I wish I just had one bike. There actually is another huge benefit of having multiple bikes compared to having one bike, and that is, if your bike breaks down, you don't have a bike. If my bike breaks down, I grab the other one and then I have time to fix mine. And very often there are down times for bikes where things have broken you've got to get parts in and stuff. Or you want to do large scale maintenance. Like I over this winter are going to be doing quite a lot of work to both these bikes. Like going taking pa uh, panels off, I'll probably have the bikes apart for a few days at a time. You know, going over stuff, doing jobs, cleaning stuff up, maintaining them, giving them a bit of an overhaul. If I only had one bike, I would never have the time to have the bike apart like that to do the maintenance to, you know, properly look after it. Because I'd need it as a bike. Now, if you have a bike in a car, well, then yeah, that's, that's not a problem for you. Actually, that is an interesting one. I think most people think having a bike in a car is a completely acceptable, normal thing to do. But having two bikes is very often seen as being extravagant. That doesn't make full sense to me. Cars are more expensive than bikes. Oh, I should have added that if you don't know this because you're new to my channel. Um, I don't have a car, I don't have a car license. I am a 100% 100, 100 bike man. It's either on two wheels or two legs. So, there you go. Uh, I think my sort of, the, the roundup of it is it's not that extravagant to have two bikes necessarily if there's a reason for owning both of them. If you've got 2,000cc superbikes, well, there isn't much point of having two. They're the same thing. But if you want them and you can afford them, then go ahead. If you want 20 of them, do that too. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below. Um, I may very well have forgotten some angle or aspect of this, but I hope I've covered most bases. If you found it useful, leave a like. Um, 
yeah, having two bikes is not necessarily that extravagant, and there's some, there's some big benefits to having two bikes. There's some, there's some cons, but there is some big benefits to it, especially if you have two different types of bikes. And if you're just, you know, if you're all about bikes, you don't have a car as well, it can be a really good, fun thing to do. As I mentioned, I am planning to do a fair bit of work to both my bikes over the winter, and that's going to consist of quite a few videos, I would imagine. I'm um, just doing general maintenance stuff, tackling little things. I'm sure we have stuff come up in between that we have to try and fix. Uh, it's, it's something that I'm planning to do periodically throughout the winter. I'm not quite sure that's going to start, but subscribe if you want to see some more stuff like that. So big thanks for watching, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.